what are the general properties of in infinite series infinite series is the first property is let an infinite series be u1 plus u2 plus u3 un infinity the first property states that if in an infinite series there be an addition or removal of certain finite number of terms the convergence divergence or oscillatory nature of the series does not changes so if in this series we remove u2 to let's say u20 u2 to u20 and if originally this series was con convergent after removal of this series also the series will remain remain convergent or if in this series we add some more terms let's say v1 v2 some finite number of terms and if the if originally the series was convergent still the series will remain convergent so this is the property that if in an infinite series we have addition or removal of certain finite number of terms the nature of the series nature that is whether it was it was convergent divergent or oscillatory it remains the same this is the first property now let's see the second property the second property tells us that if we have a series which is generally positive the terms of which are generally positive let's say this is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and we also have some negative terms minus terms now if the summation if if the series is positive then the series will still remain positive even if there are a few terms which are negative this is the second property if you look at look at this closely this follows from the first property only that removal or addition of certain finite number of terms does not changes the nature of the series so we can consider it like addition of certain more terms certain more finite number of terms and so the series the nature of the series remains constant this is the second property the third property is that if there be a series let's say u1 plus u2 un to infinity if this series we have this series it can be convergent divergent or oscillatory whatever whatever be its nature if we multiply it with a finite number if the series is multiplied by a finite number that is each term is multiplied by a finite number a the nature remains the same nature remains same that is if un was convergent it still remains convergent if it was divergent it still remains divergent if it was oscillatory in nature it still remains oscillatory so these are the three general properties of infinite series which you must understand and remember by heart because these properties are required whenever you will be solving problems whenever you will be um, doing certain tests to understand its nature you will have to have something these properties in your mind because these properties are very important to understand the nature of the series okay now let's move ahead so let's discuss what is an infinite series of positive terms an infinite series of positive terms this is a very important series that we'll be studying in this course you'll always find you have an infinite series of positive terms and you have to 
check its nature or determine something. So, first of all, let's understand what is an infinite series of positive terms. The definition is if if a series has positive terms after a few negative terms, the series is called a and called an infinite series of positive terms. What is the meaning? Let's say we have minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 2, infinity. We have some negative terms, but after that the series is, the terms of the series are positive. So, such series is called, such a series is called an infinite series of positive terms. Its first axiom is that it either an infinite series of positive terms, it either converges or it diverges to plus in one infinity, not to minus infinity because it is a series where the terms are positive. There are only a few terms which are negative, but mainly the series is of few positive terms. So, it diverges to plus infinity. This is the first axiom, you can say. Another property of an infinite series of positive terms is that if the series is convergent, if the series is convergent, then convergent, then we have the nth term un, then limit n tending to infinity un is equal to 0. This is necessary condition. If the series is convergent, then the limit of the nth term where n, when n tends to infinity is equal to 0. However, the converse is not true. What do we mean by this? The converse is not true. That is, if limit of the nth term n tends to infinity is equal to 0, it does not implies that the series is convergent. We will need these properties when we will be solving test problems, when we will be, when we will be testing whether the series is convergent, divergent or oscillatory, we will need these properties because from one property or the other, we will be able to understand the nature of that particular series. So, we what we saw in the last property, it was a necessary condition for convergence. What was it? That <coughs> if the series is convergent, then the limit of the nth term n tending to infinity will be equal to 0. This was the necessary, necessary condition for convergence. The next property that can be derived from the earlier properties that we just discussed is that if limit of the nth term is not equal to 0, then the series is divergent. This is a very important property. This one and the property just before it, which was necessary condition for convergence. So, you must remember these properties by heart. We will need it very soon. Very soon when we will be solving the problems, we will need these properties. So, you should keep these properties in your on your fingertips. Okay, so we have discussed the general properties of infinite series. Then we defined what is uh, a series of positive terms. 
and we have discussed the properties of an infinite series of positive terms. Now we will see certain tests. Tests. What are these tests? These are the tests to check whether the series is convergent, divergent or oscillatory in nature. Now we will see comparison tests of infinite series of positive terms. Remember this is for the series of positive terms only. We will see the comparison tests. Let there be the first, let us start with the first test. Let there be two series of positive terms u n and v n. These, what are these? These are two series of positive terms. Let, no, not let, if v n converges, we have v n which is convergent in nature. Then for an if, sorry, if and only if u n is less than equal to v n. That is each term of u1 is less than or equal to v1, u2 less than or equal to v2. This is the situation. Then u1 also converges. So, what we did? What we did here? We have two series u n and v n. V n is convergent in nature and u n is less than equal to v n. That is each term of this series, each term of this series is less than the corresponding term of this series. In that case, u n is also convergent in nature. This is the first comparison test. We are comparing two series. Second comparison, let us see the second comparison test. It is like this only. We have two series, u n and v n. And if Vn diverges, if Vn is divergent and if and only this is reverse, Un is greater than or equal to Vn. That is U1 is greater than or equal to V1, U2 is greater than or equal to V2 and like that. Then Un also diverges. This is the Second test, it is very similar to the first test. It, first test was for convergent series, the second test is for divergent series. Now, we will see the third series, third compar comparison test, which is called the limit form of comparison test. The third comparison test, which is a very important test, is called the limit form of comparison tests. It says that if we have u n by v n limit intending to infinity, if this quantity is finite, this is not infinite, it is a finite quantity and it is not equal to 0. If this is the case, then for the two series, the series were u n and v n, then if this condition is met, then u n and v n converge or diverge together. Let us understand this. What we do? If we are given a series u n and we have to find out whether it is convergent or divergent. What we do? We take another series v n which we are familiar with. We know it is convergent or divergent. We do u n by v n and if it is finite, not equal to 0, then we can say u n is converge or diverge as per v n. And what is that series that we take? It is generally a term from the u n only, a term from u n only. We will see examples and then understand what I actually mean from What is integral test? Let us say we have a 
series of positive terms given by f1 plus f2 f3 that is functions of 1 function of 2 if we have such a series and the second condition here is that as n increases fn decreases so if we have such a series then we can find whether the series is convergent or divergence on the basis of an integral. What is that integral? That integral is i fx dx, the function, limits are 1 to infinity. So, if this be, if the integral be finite, if we get a result which is finite, the series is convergent. And if this is infinite, the series is divergent. So, this is a very useful test. This integral test is a very useful test to determine the nature of the infinite series of positive terms. We will be using it to check the nature of the series. The first example is what is called a P series. The question is, we have a P series that is called P series. P series. It is given by 1 n to the power P n equal to 1 to infinity. How can this be written? It can be written as 1 by 1 to the power P plus 1 to the power P 3 to the power P n to the power p and so on. So, this is the series. This series is called p series. The question is to show that this series is convergent convergent for p greater than 1 and this series is divergent for p less than equal to 1. We have to show. This is the question. So, you must have understood what we have to do. We are given with a series and we have to show that for certain value of p, the series is convergent and for p less than equal to 1, the series is divergent. Okay. How will solve it? We will use the integral test. Just giving you a brief recap, integral test what we do, we take the integral from 1 to infinity fx dx. If this is finite, the series is convergent. But if it is infinite, the series is divergent. So, we will use this technique, this integral test to examine the nature of this P series. So, how will take the integral? It will be equal to 1 to infinity. This is dx by x to the power P. This we have to find and see whether it is finite or infinite. It is a bit difficult to find the integration this way. So, what we do? We take a term m and we integrate it from 1 to m dx by x to the power p where m tends to infinity. So, we will have a function after this integration and then we will check the limits for m tending to infinity so that we are able to examine the nature of the series with respect to p. So, what will be the result? This is what? This is limit m tending to infinity 1 to m x minus p dx. 
this is x to the power minus p plus 1 that is 1 minus p by 1 minus p from 1 to infinity so 1 to m with limit m tending to infinity what is this this is 1 by 1 minus p comes out of it because it is a number and we have x that is m 1 minus p minus 1 1 to the power 1 minus p that is 1 so this is what we get and our limit is m tending to infinity so we have this term 1 minus p over here this will determine the nature of the series how for p greater than 1 if p is greater than 1 this will be a number this will be minus because p is greater than 1 this will be a minus power so this will become 1 by m to the power some positive power so this will be finite this will be finite this will be finite so the integral will be finite therefore the series will be convergent okay now let's see what happens when p is less than 1 for p less than 1 let's see this for p less than 1 this is a finite number no issues if here p is less than 1 then this is m to the power some positive number and when m tends to infinity this becomes infinity so this is infinity into a number so this is infinity and i is i tends to infinity therefore the series is divergent what when p is equal to 1 this is our question we cannot put it here because we have 1 by 1 minus p so how do we get the result from here only i is 1 to infinity this is dx by x to the power p that is 1 p is 1 so this is dx by x so this is log x limited 1 to infinity this tends to infinity so at p equal to 1 the series is divergent so we have shown what was required now let's move to the second example our next example is we have a series infinite series like this this is an infinite positive series it is 1 by 1 into 2 into 3 by 3 by 2 3 4 5 by 3 4 5 and so on we have to find out whether the series is convergent divergent or oscillatory how you will do that the nth term un how can we write it you see 1 3 5 7 9 so we will write 2n minus 1 these things are very you know known to us if we have solved sequence and series if you have studied sequence and series in our 11th and 12th we know this increase is given by 2n minus 1 what is this this is n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 so this is our nth term what we will do we will do the limit form of the comparison tests limit form just a quick recap what was the limit form so it says if we have un by vn we have another series which is vn sigma vn and we have limit of this n tending to infinite infinity as finite not equal to zero then the two series u and vn converge or diverge together this was our limit form of comparison test so we will be 
applying that test to check the nature of this series. This is, we'll take n out. This is n 2 minus 1 by n. Here we have 1 n, then 1 n from here and 1 n from here. That is n cube 1 plus 1 by n, 1 plus 2 by n. So this is n square. So we will take another series which is Vn which will be 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 square plus 1 by 3 square and so on. So what will be Vn? The nth term it will be 1 by n square. So we take this series. Why? Because we know that this series is convergent. If you take the sum of first n terms of this series, it comes to pi square by 6. Since it is finite, this series is convergent. So, this is a known series. We will compare it with this series and then we will know. Okay. So, our second series is 1 by n square. So, let us take the limit. Limit n tends to infinity un by vn. Un was this thing. And by 1 by n square. So, n square in the numerator. So n square, n square gets cancelled. If you will divide this by n square, then n square, n square cancel. So, what you get? Limit n tends to infinity. This is 2 minus 1 by n. 1 plus 1 by n. And 1 plus 2 by n. So, when n tends to infinity, what happens? This is 0, this is 0, this is 0. Then this is 2. This is 1 plus 1, 2. Sorry. This is 1, this is 0, this is 0. So, this will be 2, which is a finite number. And we have seen in the limit form of comparison test that if this limit is finite, it means these two series converge or diverge together. We know that Vn is convergent in nature. Therefore, this series, the sigma Un is also convergent in nature. So, this way we find the answer. Our next example is, this is our series. 1 by x to the power n plus x to the power minus n, n 1 to infinity. So, what is the nth term? It is 1 by x to the power n plus x to the power minus n. So, we have to check its nature. How we will do? Case 1. When x is less than 1, then what we do? We take a second series Vn, which is the nth term of which is x to the power n. Okay. So, limit n tending to infinity, we have un by Vn equal to 1 by x to the power n into x to the power n plus x to the power minus n. This is what? This is 1 by x to the power 2n plus 1. We have forgot to put the limit. So, this is the limit. Now, x is less than 1. So, this will be 1 by x, which is, now, let us say that is rho. So, 1 by rho, rho, rho is greater than 1 to the power 2n. So, this will become 0. This is 1. I hope you understand this. We have x to the power 2n and we say that x is less than 1. This means x can be shown to be like this 1 by rho where rho is greater than 1. So, now this is 1 by rho to the power 2n. So, when it is infinity this becomes 0. So, this is 0, this is 1, 1. So, what do we get? This is a finite number. This implies, what does this imply? This implies that from the limit form, this implies that both the series u and v n will either be 
convergent or divergent. So, we have to see what is this. As I said, x to the power n, x is less than 1. This is 1 by rho to the power n. So, this is a convergent series. Since Vn is convergent, so Un is also con convergent. Therefore, what we get? We get if x is less than 1, the series is convergent. Okay. So, for when x is less than 1, then this series is convergent. Let us take the second case. When x is greater than 1, what then? Then what we do? We take Vn, the nth term of the Vn series to be equal to x to the power minus n. Why? Because x is greater than 1. So, this will be 1 by x to the power n. So, this series will be convergent. Now, we have to see whether u1 by Vn limit is finite or not. So, we see here limit n tending to infinity u1 by Vn. This is limit n tends to infinity un is this and by this so this comes to limit n tends to infinity 1 by 1 plus x to the power minus 2n when n tends to infinity this is 1 by x to the power 2n because x is greater than 1 so this will be 0 this is 1 so this is finite this implies both the series have same nature. Now, we have seen that Vn is convergent. Therefore, for x greater than 1, Un is convergent. So, we have seen two cases. When x was less than 1 and when x is, x is greater than 1, for both these domains, the series is convergent. Last case, when case 3 when x is equal to 1 so what this series will be this series will be x is equal to 1 so 1 to the power n if it is 1 or whatever it be this is 1 again this is 1 by x to the power n 1 so this will be 2 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 to infinity directly we can say the series is divergent so, for the first two cases when x was less than 1 and x was greater than 1, the series was convergent and for x equal to 1, the series is divergent. Thank you.